Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Winston. Welcome. In video 369, I discussed an impossible watchtower teaching about the presence of Jesus. Jesus warned that there would be false prophets who would be preaching that he has already returned. He warned of that specifically telling us not to believe. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. He also specifically mentioned those who would try to give the impression as though his coming is some sort of a secret. The Watchtower doesn't use secret. The Watchtower uses the word invisible. Jesus' disciples alone saw him depart, even as only Jehovah's Witnesses recognize his invisible return. Christ has already alluded to the fact that false prophets would try to come up with that sort of a reasoning. And so, he said, Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It was not only in video 369, I have in previous videos discussed this false teaching about the presence of Christ. But after doing 369, an active witness actually brought my attention to a statement in Insights on the Scriptures, one I've never seen before, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And that is what prompted this video. I did a preview where I showed a number of statements from the Watchtower. And I just thought I would like, for the sake of witnesses who may just miss the point, to highlight the controversies in what the Watchtower is teaching about the coming of the Lord. When C.T. Russell began publishing a new religious magazine in July 1879, it was called Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence. It was heralding Christ's presence as having begun in 1874. So we see that the initial teaching was that Jesus returned invisibly in 1874, but it was changed. Bible prophecy shows that God's heavenly kingdom was established when Christ's presence began in 1914. So no, the presence did not take place in 1874. The new teaching is that it happened in 1914. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that is new light. I have already debated this whole matter of new light several times, and I will not even get into it. Let us today accept that, okay, they had it wrong, but now they have new light. Now they have it correct. So now the new teaching is that the invisible presence of Jesus took place in 1914. Is there a difference between the presence of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus? Because the reason they came up with this presence is that they looked at what Jesus said about his coming at Matthew 24 and decided that the word that was used, the Greek word that was used is parousia and that the word means presence, not coming. So they are separating presence and coming. The idea is that and, and mark you, it is, it is not something easy for me to explain because it is confusion. But they say that his invisible presence took place in 1914. And there seems to be 
the original reason they came up with this presence is because they say the word that the King James Version uses as coming is not the right word. So they speak of Jesus' presence. But this is what they have to say about the coming of the Lord. This official presence begins with his second coming. The watchtower said, the official presence begins with the second coming of the Lord. So since the presence began in 1914, and it began with the second coming of the Lord, then the second coming of the Lord took place in 1914. Is there any other logical conclusion that can be drawn from that? The official presence, which began in 1914, began with the second coming of the Lord. So the second coming must have begun, must have taken place in 1914. So that statement places the second coming of Jesus in the past, 1914. The second coming is in the past. Is that correct? Regarding a future coming, Jesus himself made it plain that at his second coming he would not be in the flesh, visible to humans. So the organization that teaches that Jesus' invisible presence took place or began in 1914, and that it began with his second coming in the past, the last time I checked, 1914 was in the past. Now we have the second coming set for the future. How do you reconcile that? So first we had the invisible presence. Now we have his second coming to be invisible. It said regarding the future coming, Jesus himself made it plain that at his second coming, he would not be in the flesh, visible to humans. So we had the presence in 1914, which began in 1914, which is invisible or which was invisible. I don't even know what to say. Is invisible because they say it is, it is from 1914 until now. So his presence is invisible. Now his future coming will also be invisible. Am I understanding it right? Am I taking the watchtower out of context? Can you reconcile all of this for us, please, Jehovah's Witnesses? He gave us visible signs by which to verify his invisible presence. So here we are told that Jesus has given visible signs to indicate his invisible presence. Then comes the amazing statement from insights on the scriptures. Christ Jesus showed that his presence would not be kept secret, even as it is impossible to conceal lightning that comes out of eastern parts and shines over to western parts. Now the Watchtower tells us that his presence will not be kept secret, that it will be impossible to conceal comparing it to lightning, which everyone sees. Someone commented on the video, the preview video, that you got to love invisible lightning. Now, that sort of sarcasm is what the organization invites when it puts forward these strange statements. It will be impossible, the organization says, to conceal the presence of Jesus. How then does it become invisible? Can anyone reconcile that? The reason, dear Watchtower members, that the Watchtower statements are so confusing 
is because they are not presenting the truth. The truth is as clear as crystal. Someone said all of these statements make the teaching as clear as mud. It is pure confusion. There is no witness out there who can make sense of this. My brother can't touch it. He keeps talking about getting me to people who will explain it to me. People who cannot answer. They stop answering. They stop responding. Because the thing makes no sense. You are being lied to just the way Jesus warned. Ignore me if you wish. Do not ignore what Jesus is saying to you. It is false prophets who will tell you that Jesus returned invisibly. I'm trying to make... It is so confusing. Telling you that Jesus returned invisibly and that is this invisible presence began with his second coming and now trying to tell you that the second coming is set for the future. That's what happens when you tell a lie and you are trying to make it make sense. You are being taught pure confusion. You are being told lies about the second coming of the Lord. And if that statement from insights on the scriptures do not open your eyes, I don't know what will. Let me read it again for you. Christ Jesus showed that his presence would not be kept secret, even as it is impossible possible to conceal lightning that comes out of the eastern parts and shines over to the western parts. There is no such thing as any invisible presence of Jesus. Get it out of your heads. Wake up to the reality that you are being lied to. In the next video, I have an important question for you. Is Jesus your Lord as he was Paul's Lord? Thanks for watching. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.